afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast. Me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master of propaganda. We're off here to a one versus one on oh, Crossroads in the north. It is Quidditz, a rank 15 Wehrmacht player. At least sort of roughly there in one versus one. Finding here for the German army in Deutschland, taking on the role here of the. Oh, let's just go with 111th Panzer Brigade with Jaeger Infantry, Assault Support, and Spearhead. Punch with the Infantry, Panther Passman of the South, it is Machu. Fun here for King Country. Oh, not King Country, the American United States. They are definitely probably some of the last ones to fight for King and Country. What with the whole tea business and everything, and so, a revolution. But are we fun here for America? Freedom, democracy, the Republic. Taking on the road of the 5th Armored Division with Heavy Cavalry, Mechanized Company, and Tactical Support. We got triple infantry there for them, including the extra handy 10%. Veterans he's gaining there for the riflemen. Pretty much a bit unique there in a the sense, while other armies, of course, have access to experience gained bullets since they don't have access to it otherwise to their basic infantrymen. And that causes a big boon there to the Americans. We got gunners moving from the north here. And you're flipping westwards. Pioneers ground the northern point here. So hard push into the cemetery there for Quidditz. And Matt here pushing hard for the eastern fuel point into the lumber yard. Standard stuff here. Note lots of tank traps to defend the points versus any advancements from the crowds. Grab the point here. And as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And press that bell button. Helps me, helps you. Also, a big thanks to my patron supporters, without which this episode and so many others would not have been possible. Thanks to you, patron supporters, you're a handsome bunch of bastards. Grab the western fuel point here. Pioneers advancing up as well here. Secure the point here. Also, act as a trip line case the Americans might be planning something in the west, but so far. Match is all about the east. That Rob's going to win. They're going to moving up here. Oh, watching the center there. They're maybe trying to make a run for the building here, but that's going to be the rifle running. They're going to get back into heavy cover, otherwise, they're going to get beaten. Silly, that's for sure. It is absolutely for sure. they got to be a bit mindful. There we go, falling back into cover, into the building. We note here the rifle next is setting up this role. He's, I think what Match is doing is to hope to bait out his opponent, trying to make say, oh, I can get to the building after all, and then no. In this case, though, bait didn't work out. Crits did not buy into that. Up north here, Sandbag Spark Wire. More gun is in the way there for credits. Standard stuff here so far. Standard stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary with either build here. Continue skirmishing here again. Trying to bait them up, but it's not quite working. It's not quite working, part because the building is just so crucial. And because Quirits really has seen through it. So there you go. Match closing on the Gunners. So that's going to beat them up. City more Gunners arriving here. But even then, the engagement is quickly swinging in the favor of Match. And I think Quirits is better off just disengaging here. Rather than keep trying to fight him up. And perhaps trying to flank the MG42 at most. But he's got the machine gun up there in the left flank now. More Gunners moving up here. Other squad flying back. In this case, they're just going to die anyway. Since the Viking is so close to the Gunners East. And just beat them up there. So not great. So engaging here for credits. Pretty early tactical win here for match. We're getting threatened the car point there and the resource flow machine being hauled back to deal with that. Tech there for crit or match you there. And I imagine yep, it is the platoon command post there being upgraded. As for credits, we got no sign of anything happening there. No tech yet. They can tech now, and he would definitely benefit from taking now. No sign of doctrine though from either side. There's plenty of choices, plenty of choices. Personally, I would probably recommend Jaeger in this case, since the G43s and such are quite handy versus the Americans. Helps lose out the playing field between your Grenadiers and their riflemen. Plus, ambush tactics never hurts either. I mean, assault support and spirit aren't bad. I think assault support is definitely the better of the two. But, in fact, the Americans really just want to level up the level between the Grenadiers and the riflemen to sort of make sure they don't just beat you silly that way. And that's where Jaeger infantry shines. As for Matthew, I mean, obviously all three are quite good for different reasons. We'll see what it goes for. Oh, we got Lieutenant up following on the 5th Cal Machine, help you help with the credits infantry. Rather than being slowly bled out, in the east, we've been pushing up against the resistance and heavy cover, taking some damage in the process. More gun is moving up there, no sign of upgrades yet here for credits, no machine guns, and no sign of Jaeger infantry being chosen either. Attack final on the way, very good. Resistance is pushed up, match moving in the force of the east, we all got Lieutenant Rifle Support moving westwards. Lieutenant Eastwood, we got the hip cab almost done there for Matthew. Almost done, but not quite. There we go. Fifth cab ready. Rather than push back one gun the squad, there's still another one. Plus a gun the squad on back if it becomes necessary. Lieutenant moving up here for Matthew. Sending forth there for freedom and democracy. Yeehaw. So pushing trade here for the loot gun the is there. Lieutenant successfully pushes ahead. 
Then we got Punishment from Lawyer for Credits. Hope you'll be right. Also quite good at that. And in a pinch, I mean, they can be upgraded with Pantry Strike if it becomes necessary here versus Matthew's Infantry. Rather holding up, back here, Troop Reinforcing. Bunker on the way, that's quite healing. Very good there for credits. No selling docks and still. Oh, again, Jaeger Infantry seems possibly more light now. Pantry with D4 defeats can also, but at least according to Zombie, good. I'm still personally not super sold on that one. Sandbacks up in the center here, so we got heavy covers. The first doctor means right from these defensive structures, which you see in action. Smoke, Rangers, combined arms, and of course the M26 Pershing heavy tank. Kind of punch me up the eastern side. Stuart light tank on the way there for Mr. Machu, which reinforcing healing. And I believe we are seeing some upgrades somewhere. There we go, light machines on the way there. Increase the chance of this being, I would say, Jaeger infantry. You typically want a lot of G43s out. Of course, he maybe he wants to go for a mix, but even by then, typically they've gone for it now. And in fact, most is going to be equipped with light machine guns. So, less likely here. Stood light tank halfway done. He will need to like to make a nice cut with the pack 40. Meanwhile, good pushing the cop on there by Matthew against Quidditz. MD4 departing coming. Five of the advancing on these, but the 50 cup, of course, returns the favor there on the advancing Germans. Stood light tank almost done as well there. Still not like to make a nice comedy to the Stuart light tank. It's going to be a big problem here for Quidditz and for the 111th Panzer Brigade. And he's in the fire here. Machine is sitting up here in the north. Then he's playing lieutenant. Not enough machine for a rough grenade. And in the south here, rough, they're about to clear it out. Pioneers pushing force there for credits. And of course, with them in the battlefield, they're definitely not going to be sending up a light to make a nice company in time to deal with the steward in any reasonable pace. So there you go. Steward light tank out here for Matthew and the 5th Armored Division. He's sitting right by the Gundiers. Double up. in course, quite a threat on the flanks. Steward here pushing back the Pioneers with ease. Both few points under control here of Matthew. Definite problem here for credits, in particular on Crossroads, which is a map with more resource point than other maps, so meaning any sort of advantage like this can quickly snowball out of control even further. So this is a danger, a danger, dangerous situation for credits, and you will need to sort of uh, shut it down very, very fast. Otherwise, he is going to be, I think, in some significant issues. Grab the point there, cutting off the fuel at least, that way denying things from snowballing out of control too fast. Like to make a nice company. He's gonna need to rush it out. He may also have to delay reinforcing some troops because again he's gonna need that manpower for the pack 40. I mean in a pinch, he could theoretically go for pantry sex, but then it takes some time to get the munitions for it, but he could. Not necessarily but need what I'd go for like as a standard choice, but in the pinch, they do work out quite nicely. Grand points in the east. Stuart their panzer first buying query it some more time. But even then, with the American Fleet Corps, you need to fix the damage on the spot. So even then, there's like limits to how much uh, time that can be bought there. There we go. Pack 40 can be called in now. And I imagine Quidditch would want to do that immediately. There we go. Pants up, they can only field six to it there. Quickly fixed up. Done this advancing over the German army. Deutschland Quidditch. Still without a doctrine, though. Still hesitant to choose a plan, though, again. I mean, if it's not Jaeger Infantry, then I think Assault Support make a bunch of sense. Or the Blitzes could be quite useful there for resource securing. Until the field officer is handy, and of course the air support isn't bad either. Plus you get a Tiger Tank. And particularly these two doctrines have some significant OLED, whereas like a lot of the other parts here, the Spearhead aren't quite as great. In some ways, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure why he has both of these. But anyway, he's moving up against the Lieutenant. Of course, might be just really likes having access to Fragmentation Bombs. And Tiger Tanks, and that's obviously not a wrong thing to have either. Pioneers here, we're pushed back but through the light tank. West side, there we got troops moving up. Gunnies was Lieutenant Machine, is heading up as well here. Pack 40 ready. And there you go, Veterans who won game here for quits. Fifth cover opening up here. Gunnies is slightly suppressed. Nothing further on in Quidditch space, and still no doctrine. Still no choice here made. As for Machu, we got weapon racks on the weather, BARs and bazookas, very good choice there. I mean, he's got plenty of munitions, so it would be either that or going for grenades, which wouldn't be a bad pick either. Obviously, in some ways, less flexible since you can't get bazookas, but, you know, a lot of grenades can also be quite good at just blowing apart your opponent's stuff and catching them off guard. Push on the west side here to get denied a few from there to the Germans, but Quidditch holds the line. The fatherland there you go double gun this light machine instead of the rifle squad the suit there need to get the pack 40 over there in the center machine gun holding off any american advance there for now at least at least until he say brings up some artillery in which case you could easily push out the machine gun he has easy access to a mortar of course he might be setting up for some faster armor here we'll have to see punch gun there catch the rifle squad in a bad spot 
Is there no sign of doctor here for credits? Is there no sign of a choice there? Are there any decisions? East side here, pioneers with sandbags on the car for neighbor. The rifle squad is on the scene to put a stop to that. Rifle right is holding up here by the western cutoff point. Mine swoopers ahoy hoy in case Quaritz has been mining and Quaritz has not been mining. A bit of an earth sight there. I mean, terror mines are quite handy in this. Mines can also be fiendishly useful. Sniper here for Quaritz. Interesting pick at this point in the game. Obviously, the Americans do struggle a bit with snipers since none of their sniper counts are particularly efficient. But we'll have to see what ends up with here for match in the face of credits the sniper once he arrives the tendy holder is up there with the bar they equip very good punch of the rifle right from here by the western car foot very good and there you go goodness against rifle squad here up close that's gonna win here for the gunner robin thanks the lot machine gun and there you go rifle right routed by the grenadiers the heroic machine gun fire and sending up here around to be a pretty great pick for the mp42 there we got the grenadiers sending out sniper sending out as well there for credits And we got here armor piercing rounds, MD42 the holding up. Half eight to Vets and T2. There's his rifleman. Panzers are flanking up. No way he's setting up for the flank here. It's a very deep one, so there's a better chance of catching the retreat path, increasing the chance of maybe popping a grenade. Just swiping them out there. Good work, unless Critz isn't paying attention, in which case he's missing out the opportunity to really do some serious work down the retreating rifleman. Missed opportunity then, but still, overall, nice setup. Just didn't quite nail the landing there, if you will. Sniper there, spotted and routed. One kill so far. We'll put some pressure there on Machin. Of course, might be the quiz just hoping for Machin to commit mistakes due to being frustrated by the sniper. Now, uh, definitely some psychological elements there with the snipers as well. Soon on that east, when he's routed. Sniping forward here, one kill. We got tech there for credits. Very good. Thanks for that being sniped by the Sharp Schutzer. Machin could consider taking out. He is not, though. More kills here for the sniper, very good. Good harassment and disruption though. Punch going in the left flank, moving about the almost got the lieutenant as well. Looks like he's heading up for a really deep flank perhaps now, but there you go. Two rifle squads coming in, BRs in hand. They're going to leave, I think, Crits uh, punch him in a really bad spot unless he pops a really great bone grenade. Oh, oh dear, almost had that one actually, almost had it. That could actually have been a much more painful moment there for Machu. Still, actually two then those Panzer Grenadiers, not shabby, not shabby at all. Can soon begin to build that support co then begin pushing for some Panzers here versus Machu. So Machu, still no tank there, still no sign of tanks. And you go, Pack lands a great and suit light tank, punches a big clean hole right through it. On the west, they push for the fuel point again, we got the MG4 to make to deal with that. Perhaps not intentionally, but it will be there to deal with it. Captain out here for Machu. Ooh, Captain with the Lieutenant Heavy Cavalry might be he's planning a Pershing stall here. A bit rarer nowadays, but if it begins going for double anti tank guns, I would say that solidifies the possibility of it. Also worth noting besides the sandbags there. I mean we haven't seen much of the dogs, but even then there's, there's a good chance here for crits to deduce. Then if he sees the captain, the lieutenant, and the sandbags, the opponent A has gone for heavy cavalry. And two might be strong for a Pershing. Particularly since he's double anti tank guns, he should be able to safely make that conclusion of course whether or not Machi goes for that then of course going to be the big question he likely is since that's typically part of the strategy but it is definitely also not impossible that Machi is aware it might signal things too much to have his opponent but again if Critchus begins hitting with the tanks he will be forced to go for it either way so we'll have to see how it works out there Pioneers and Sunday to retreat more Pioneers there for credits and the German army oh they got wide stuck Bung it as well not quite a masterpiece of a throw, but nonetheless got one killed and the rest in a uh, hurry to get out of there before they get killed as well. Down to just one man. And he did not make it. Rifleman's moving up the west side. He's still putting pressure on the left flank as well. Kurt's semi-tail position is utterly crumbling. Like an overly stale cookie. So Palmer caught there for Quidditz. He could push his armor pretty fast here. Pack lands another hit on the sword light tank. As for Machu, still some hesitation and resources, still some hesitation. Punches the rifleman, got going to need some by the eastern side. Pentos in the stood light tank. Almost got it there, but it is nonetheless alive. There's a good chance I think he might lose the gun. It is just simply taking too much firepower. A lot of BARs there. 
quite good at wiping the tuning units due to the high rate of fire. And does the gun idea make it? No, he did not. Then this was the rifle and the lieutenant out in the open. Fifth couple opening up the advancing troops as well there. Back here, sniper reinforcing, close to the pa oh, reinforcing healing. I don't think there's anything to reinforce there. I do not think there's anything to reinforce there. Still the son of a doctor from Crit, so at this point assault support seems very much like the uh, prime choice here that a spearhead. Yeah, reinforcing at this point I think would be a less efficient choice. We need to get out some armor here, I think. Oswin could be pretty great. Panzer of course, would be solid as well. As for Machu, he's flooding out our resources, not taking, not doing anything. Definitely feel like that's a mistake for Machu. Definitely feel like that is a significant issue and definitely needs to do something with those resources. Like, if he's planning for the Pershing, set up for it faster. Maybe he can set some fuel cash to help with the resource. But even though, of course, at 12 command points, it's still going to be some time away from him. But even then, just flooding all these resources is definitely, I think, the least efficient method of going about with it. And it's not like they're in a bank and he gets interest rate on it, like, you know, spend it. Panzer 4 down for credits. The Panzer come back and way to support here, the one alone of the Panzer Brigade. We're seeing it right here, and there you go. Lost a Pioneer squad again. Quite painful there for credits. Great for Match, who's not 1,000 manpower. Definitely needs to spend resources. There you go, going for the anti tank guns. So, yeah. Pershing Assault seems like it. Oh, we also get Rangers. Interesting. With some they can be quite hazardous. Then, of course, in a pinch, you can, of course, turn them into a tank team, at which point they are really great with bazookas as well. Panther 4, they're almost down there for credits and Deutschland. Brown here is the Panzer Grenadier. The Sturmgewehr sliding up the Americans. Righteous firepower. And there you go, double anti tank gun. So, at this point, I think the signal is very much given here by Matthew. There's no doubt about it. He is going for the Pershing stall, and perhaps him floating resources with him, debating with himself. Whether he really wanted to go for it, or if he's just pushed for medium armor, but it's quite clear the dice have been thrown. He has committed to the way of the Pershing. Reasons they're in a bit of trouble without the Zookas, they are, well, pretty much just exposed against the Panda 4, and the Stuart Light Tank is also in trouble. Might try some shell shock there, but even then, the Stuart chance of escaping the Panda 4, I think, are very, very humble. Popping out the crew here, trying to do some repairs there. Oh dear, that didn't work out. Not entirely really planned, but whatever you planned didn't work out. And now it's got the still light tank on fire, and the crew is quite dead. Pencils there pinned down, routed. Western fuel, but then being reclaimed again by the Germans. Crate still has plenty of fuel, so might be able to push out for another Pentafor soon. Match is not far from the perishing. Fuel wise, he's definitely there, except he needs to take up still, so he's obviously still further away. And there you go, Rangers actually go for the bazookas. Note you can actually equip your Rangers with three weapons from a weapon rack and not just two, but the specialty there as well. But yeah, he needs to still take up before you can even consider setting up for the Pershing there. So he definitely needs to do that as well. Panther only be repaired. Another push into the cemetery, Lieutenant and Rifle bars are plenty. This is one gun the escort with a light machine gun. Also worth of course, Quids has also lost a gun the escort, so he's actually suffering significant infantry casualties, and people careful about that. And also really would like to see a doctrine soon here from Quidditz. Panther 4 there, half eight of it since he wants, Snap setting up there, 13 kills. There we go. 14 kills. Got one of the entertainment and crewmen. The machine is to hold up the center here. I feel like Machu could benefit from multi versus Quidditz. A bit of a slow could make it much harder for Quidditz to form up some of his defensive positions. Right from the east routed, he opening up the lumber yard here for the Germans, and tanks all fall back alongside the Rangers. Might want to evacuate that building that is not structurally safe anymore. Not by a long shot. North here, Pont Link Seas, ground the Pont in the West. We got another Panzer Ward there for credits. Double Panzer come back with you, very good. Machu still not taking up. Here, back into the building. A bold maneuver there by Machu, and then out of the building. A more sensible maneuver. Good hit on the right from their forces. 
Machu to pull back the rest of the cover. Nina engaged by the Panzer IV. Not a great situation there from Machu. And he just needs to retreat the 50 cover. Second Panzer IV almost done. And tanking moving westwards here. While the same type being claimed to have the US Army. And there you go, Gunnar is in trouble. Panzer IV does a problem. You also got the anti tank being hold 40. Second Panzer IV, though, almost done there for credits. And the 111th Panzer Brigade, though, he is still without a doctrine. He still remains. I mean, at this point, it seems so slightly with assault support experience nonetheless. Because, I mean, otherwise. At this point, I think he wouldn't have gone for the second pentacle, just checked up and saved up for the Tiger tank. Of course, if he's sensible, he wouldn't be doing that. Of course, he would be going for two pentacles before trying to stall into them. Anyways, pentacle down to less than half health. Punch when they're moving up. Rangers in hot pursuit. Suppressed already by the fifth cover. Almost got the pentacle there, but Quidditch is able to salvage it. Cook part of a great in the shooting punch when they're getting one kill there. Jurgen sadly was a bit too slow and then is a bit too dead. Bazooka rockets flying away there. Snarber getting a good kill there. Got 15 kills there. Machu Bawe finally taking up there and will then be roughly a minute away from the Pershing heavy tank here. Ranger squad almost wiped out. That's going to be quite costly there for Machu and for the 5th Armored Division. Michigan then the side coming. Could have set within 10 armor position rounds. Better no sight there, I think, by Quidditz. If he had that, I think he would actually go in the Ranger squad there wiped out. Panther fall in dining repairs. Pershing heavy tank very, very close here for credits. Oh, I've got credits from Matthew. The only way to close for credits is if it somehow gets abandoned. In which case, it's close for credits. Minefield on the eastern fuel point. Two thumbs up there. Two credits. Good work there. My god, the crowds lay down mines. That's not cool. But we lay down mines too, Sarge. Well, there's a German. I was a good old American. Are they made in Mexico? No. The Maiden. I actually don't know where. Maybe Utah. Back here, Trifin Force, and there go Major, and there go Pershing out the 22 minute mark here for Mr. Machu. More punch going to be here for Quirit. Still no sign of a doctrine. He will definitely bend from Stooksy versus the Pershing. Double anti up in the Pentafall. First shot goes through. Second shot, Miles go through, and there you go. Double hits in the Pentafall. Oh, yeah. Stops up there. Hits a mine, possibly, but gets away, gets away. Avoids destruction here by the per anti tank guns, or the Pershing for that matter. Punch with there, popping a bun grenade, but I think they need to get out before the Pershing turns them into minced meat. Or the closest explodey equivalent of minced meat. Back here, Pentafall, good to go there for credits. And for that going into space, they're going to shoot right now to be good. And we do get a 22 minute Jaeger infantry choice. Definitely highly unusual. I mean, typically, again, you want it as soon as you can benefit from the G for the Feast and the Ambush Camouflage early on. So, definitely a bit awkward here by Crit. Plus, an early A command would have been great. So, yeah, I mean, nice doctrine. But the way he chose it, definitely, I feel like, was anything but applaudable. But still, he went for it. So, you know, that's that. It's not like, say, he went for. Close air support or Luftwaffe supply doctrine. Yeah. But I'm guessing we'll be seeing some ambush training. I mean, that on the gun at least, like machine, be great. Panther will also benefit a bunch from it. And plus, of course, even the MG42 could benefit a lot from it. So we'll have to see where it goes for it. First, we up the shoots up in this building there. Good hit with its 19 on the gun. No, it's the same as the one used by the Jackson tank destroyer. On the West T-50 cover routed by the Grenadiers. Ambush camouflage almost ready for those chaps. Panzer's also getting it. Very good. They do benefit a lot from it since those are some, those are some significant accuracy bonuses you get there. So set up correctly. Thin, really just throws down an opponent, particularly at the ace level. Cover shadow. Panzer protector hit from the Pershing. Pack the returns to favor to the Pershing t heavy tank there. Grenadiers on the flank here as the rifleman. Ambush training on our uh, ambush camouflage in the MG42 as well. The only one can be squad, I think, and upgrade at this point. Everything else that can be upgraded has been upgraded with ambush camouflage here for credits. Person moves up, this shoots and misses the grenadiers. Their position proved to be too formidable readout here for the Pershing until they retreat, in which case, easy prey. Back reinforcement thing going on there for Machu. And looks like he has upgraded the range over the third and the final bazooka. Gravni versus Panzer gonna be the Panzer's easy run. We're getting G for the feature on as well there. I guess that'll hurt uh, Matches infantry a bunch there. Gunners in the fire from the Persian, they'll be routed. 
catch the moment. Trying to flank, but there you go. Rangers, the Suka fire there. Pushes the Pantafor down to very little health in a matter of moments. Also backed up the end to Tangan. Good, they could take it up and fall. And there you go. Pantafor down. A blow to Kuritz and the 1 and 11th Panzer Brigade. Machine gun, they're opening up here. In theory and something, except it's not. And there you go. Good hit from the Pack 40 there on the Pershing. Pushing it back east side there. Other Pantafor moving about. Causing collapse on the right flank. Here's the Ace G for the fleet. Panzer Gandhi or Panzer Alfera. Moving ahead here for credits and Deutschland. Manpower fuel being floated. Going for tier 4 then. Might be setting up for a Pershing then here. Though I think a pair of Stukes would do the job just as well, if not better, to be quite frank in my opinion. Panzer does the Pershing. Shoots and gets a good hit there. Farm Gunnery Squawks are not being upgraded. Why can't we get it? Because apparently the sergeant is allergic to camouflage. Whatever that means. Like, how are you allergic to camouflage? Bravo notice the Panzer going to be there. Grab the Eastern Fuel Point there. Western Victory Point claimed there by freedom. Democracy. Gunnery's being rushed with their light machine guns. Clark tightly clenched in the hands. Tech almost down there for credits. But yeah, this definitely seems like a uh, Panther plan here for credits. Well, obviously it works out. As for Matthew, he definitely A, needs more fuel. And B, he needs more tanks. Tanks are also going to be a good investment here. Brighton as the uh, Lieutenant. Lieutenant with no cover versus double gun with light machine guns. Definitely not a winning combination for the Lieutenant. Too quickly falls back. Down just one man there. We got Fiend 11 from Fiend 43. Brighton and 5 from the Panther 4. We got 9 kills in Messenger 1 there. Snowball has been killed at some point as well. Another casualty in this pixelated war. Pershing hot pursuit of five kills, close to one, but does not f pursue fully and destroy. At least attempt to destroy. Major noise of this grenadiers. Major might want to be a bit careful there versus these ace grenadier with the light machine gun. Heavy panzer corps going out there for credits and Deutschland. Panzer in a lot of trouble. Almost got it, almost got it. Then he's around the major, almost getting a white. The fifth cal on the scene and hosting down those crouch with good old American 50 cal fire. Yeehaw. Panzer the reinforcing, healing up. And there you go, Panzer Kampang Fun from there for credits. Panzer does the fifth cal flanking it, very good. Rather than opening up. Actually called in the light to Fantalika Shoots badge. Oh, calling in the retreat path there as well. Cheeky setup, cheeky setup. Looks like he took the bait, but in this case, the trap didn't spring particularly well. At least it didn't explode into his face, as there's been something like from Acme. Perch my head. It needs to repair that one. It's actually worth knowing he only has one reaction squad. He probably wants to get more than that. And he really wants to face up the Pershing soon. I mean. Oh, you just risking a few good hits, and that Pershing is going to be a, well, getting. Panther almost under for credits and for the German army. Troops are reinforcing healing. The enemy is taking our territory. And we are right about to see the Panther mod lay. There we go. Yeah, we have a total of three models of the Panther with the Model D, the Model A, and then the Model G. This is the model A we can tell partly due to the radiator parts in the rear. Those little three ones there. The signal it is the model A. Little fun fact there. Model G also had significant improvements like there's no driver's hatch there, so the front line was much safer in that sense. Plus they fixed the shot track those people basically could sort of see this curve to help deflect shots. The problem was it would deflect shots into the top of the tank, so they had to fix that by att attaching a little chin there. Early models of the King Tiger had the same issue, but they just redesigned the entire turret there instead. Little fun fact there, though. Pumps in a bit of trouble. Adding the pin up machine in there to the Panzer Kampfang film. Gonna go for the Persian, which he still hasn't fixed up. Definite mistake there by Machu. Definite flaw there. Panther Ting locked down from the M1 anti tank gun and the Pershing but super fast. Well, the range moving in this world could actually see the Pershing go down pretty fast. Even combined arms are very nice there. So, didn't last long still. Almost got the Panther here. Range should be able to fix up. There you go. Panther down. It's going to blow there to crits, but not as big as the Pershing. Be knocked out. And there you go. Cream Pot take up the Panther again. The range is just very powerful there with the bazookas. High accuracy, high penetration rate of fire, all of that. You're making crit into decimate armor. And there you go. 
can't afford down as well there. Lack of support, mate. There's a much more costly salt here for him than he could have been. I'll tell you five corners as well, though. Still, he got the Pershing. But the question, of course, here is, is that worth a Panther and a Veteran Panther 4? And very much has easily leveled the ground. In fact, now Machu has the upper hand in terms of like, just raw numbers versus crits. So crits, I think, I think they're not going to hit on that one. The Reds, of course, he could probably call in some more armor. And the question, of course, further is... Will Machu try and stall up for another Pershing here? In which case, Quidditch must still be able to win this. But to say, if Machu decides to go for medium armor now, in fact, I'm surprised they didn't go for any armor support this Pershing. I mean, Quidditch is going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is right now a golden opportunity for Machu, but the question is, can he realize this and seize upon it? And there's Panzer IV. Slowing the way here, Quidditch not trying to stall up for anything big, just focusing on getting our armor as fast as possible. So thumbs up there to Quidditch. Got the Jaeger Command Squad as well there, adding some more infantry, putting up to five infantry squads. Also very good there, Rangers in trouble. And the fifth guard there also falling back. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Panther 4 almost done here. Meanwhile, Grenadiers and Panzer are hard to work, got the Jaeger Command Squad's race in the west, the Bazooka's Ops have no use against the Jaeger Command Squad. Rather than the Panzer Grenadier. There we go, Panther for for credits. And your fortress is right in the center. Panther, I think, needs to retreat. I mean, they're very low on health. If you do see a bunt grenade there, does get a couple, but I think you still need to retreat them. Some of the air command squad up here. Then the dealer moving up. No, both squads now have an upgrade with the ambush camouflage, meaning all of his troops now have it. Or the ones that can be upgraded. Pioneers obviously cannot, but the air command squad have it automatically, by the way. So, technically, almost has a fully ambush force. There we go. Raffin, it lands a decent hit. Quit it. Oh, Matthew's still not going for armor. Almost seems like he's going to try to start for another Pershing. Pack forward in the weather for Quidditz. We Meanwhile, the Quidditz is just trying to gain as much advantage as he can with the Panther on the field here. Versus Matthew's lacking anti tank weapons because, of course, they're insane. There you go. One cleared out. Bun grade here, but I think. Quite decent, but they're going to be forced back by the sheer numbers there from Machu. The west side, there we got troops moving up. Back here, reinforcement healing. Pack 40 almost done. Machu's almost got the cooldown fit, sorted out. Maybe even though he just needs to resource, he almost has the fuel, he just needs the manpower. And I suspect Quirit is very much aware of this. We got Panzer with the rifleman by the car point. Fifth cover going for the victory point there. Up close, gonna be a close one here, but I think the Panzer should have the upper hand here. There we go, routed. Dispatched with all haste. Troops heading out there, gonna be saying westwards, 25 kills. Depleted rifleman, and we got the Rangers moving up there as well. Not gonna be great versus the infantry unless they get off a great grenade, which is not impossible. But with triple bazookas, I mean, their rule anti infantry ability is quite limited. Panther lands a great hit, then plus the arrival of two other infantry squads. Quickly compels Magic to retreat the Rangers rather than risk losing them, which, of course, is, I think is a very solid call to make. Certainly more so than trying to stop for a second person, which he is not far off from. But in the meanwhile, he is taking a bit of a beating at the front line. Quirt is consolidating and getting more control here, which could very much deny Matthew any benefit of going for another Persian here. Machine the route here by good deep flank there by credits. Thumbs up to that one. Troops on the retreat path there. Leading that was a big two points. Got 272 versus 200 and well. 72. Second person out there for Matthew Credits. Could go for Stugan Theory. He could transfer out for a Panther. We'll have to see how he responds to the Pershing there. We'll have to see a response. But with a Panzer and a Pack 40, it's going to be a bit tricky there versus the Pershing. Not impossible, but definitely tricky. He does theoretically have access to super close air support in a bit there, but even then, he's going to have a bit of a challenge. And will, I think, depend in part how uh, Matthew handles his Pershing. Good hit from the Pack 40 and the Pershing. Punches through the front armor there. With a nice degree of ease. Second hit there goes through as well. Very good there for. Quidditch, definitely bad news for Matthew. 
Reinforcements need to fix that. The obviously need to reinforce. In fact, he's pushing hard east with everything he has and hard west, leaving the center open. But also, leaving his Pershing without any easy means of repairs. Pioneers is moving up, then guessing Quirits is setting up for another Panther here. Pershing moving westwards, Pani is spotted by this mighty American Armored Reaver. Panther horse setting out, straight to the Pershing, shot bounces, Pershing does not, but there you go, pack 40. Could try for a target weak point here, but decides not to. Another hit there, and we got a support calling, could see the Pershing go down here. Looks like a mistake of the match, no, perhaps not, perhaps not. Luff up strikes down here. Cannon fire strafing the M26 Pershing heavy tank. There you go, another series of shots. Almost gets the Pershing. Slip of health left. But he's also got depleted resistance score to try and fix it. And that man actually just put him out of the fight for so long that Quirch can win this. There you go. Unit wiped out there. Lieutenant down with this. I think Matthew's spirit is broken. A victory there for the German army. A victory or loss for America, freedom, democracy. So there you go, GG, game over, Harlequin of Jaeger Infantry, it's Purge, they feel like Kurtz could have gone for it sooner, bit hesitant there, but also a good place there. Match, I feel like also had some good place in there, but uh, strategically I managed to set himself down, but again, I think floating too much in the Pershing, but also floating resources at several stages, and then just not fixing the Pershing at the time when he could have, I think was also a mistake there. And also, she's just gone for armed supported. Had he done that again, I think that engagement here for someone had gone a lot different, and his person likely would have been alive. So, there are definitely some issues there by matches, which I think I gave credits a good chance of winning this. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. I've learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on the channel, friends, and family. But don't check the enemies. This is a pearl link to tears. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow again for a nice episode. Bye.